This video is sponsored by Crunchyroll. It's time once again for the anime of the month, and boy is it a doozy. This month's creepy anime is Parasite the Maxim. It's like John Carpenter's The Thing in anime form. In modern Japan, parasitic aliens invade Earth, quietly stealing the bodies of some humans, then head out to prey on other humans. But one boy stops the parasite's spread so that it only takes over his hand. It's a tale of people being preyed upon by monsters. As always, Parasite the Maxim can be viewed on the best anime viewing platform outside of Japan, Crunchyroll. There are hundreds of professionally subbed anime in high definition that you can view all across your devices. Plus, new episodes air as early as one hour after they air in Japan. You simply can't beat it. Anime has always been one of my favorite forms of entertainment, especially when they can craft such disturbing scenes as these. You can watch Parasite the Maxim and get 30 days of free anime today. Just go to crunchyroll.com slash darkness. Thanks, Crunchyroll. Speaking of crunchy, a taco has never sounded so deadly. This world is a strange one. I've waited 23 years to tell these tales to you. Nah, just kidding, but I've been looking forward to it. Taco Bell is one of my favorite places for a quick snack, usually at midnight, when I should have stopped playing Disgaea hours ago. Yes, it's a tasty place, but apparently it can be a dangerous one as well. Alive or dead, people like to be creepy, even when you're trying to enjoy some nachos. So enjoy these allegedly true Taco Bell horror stories. Come on in to Toxic Hell. Number one, The Creeper at the drive through submitted by May. I was 16 when I worked at Taco Bell. It was right next to my high school, an easy job, and it was fun because my friends would always come by to hang out whenever it wasn't busy. I think of myself as an attractive girl, tall with nice curves, green eyes, and dark red hair. I was used to guys hitting on me and I just tried to brush it off. I had a boyfriend at the time, and in my relationships, I was always loyal. I've had a few weirdos hit on me in my time, like one time, a guy asked me what tasted the best, and I said it's all pretty good, only for him to ask what I tasted like in response. I was disgusted, but I'm tough, and ever since I was a kid, I've practiced martial arts. I was even in juvie for a few months due to some drug use. I had been suspended from school several times for starting fights. It was nothing I was proud of, but I knew I could hold my own, so stuff like that always just made me laugh. That is, until my sixth month working in Taco Hell. Legally, if you're under the age of 18, they can't work you after 10 p.m. and more than 20 hours a week. My manager, who I later found out got fired for skimming funds, was a jerk and did not follow these rules. She made me work on days I requested off, even on my own birthday. I even had to work overtime, which often interfered with my school. One night, it was cold outside and pouring rain so there wasn't a lot of business. My manager had me working until midnight that night, a Thursday. It was about 10 o'clock and it was just me and a few cooks. I was working the drive-thru because the lobby was already closed. We were goofing off because like I said, it wasn't really busy. One of the cooks made me a burrito because it was just that slow. I was eating in the manager's office with my headset off as I watched the cameras. I glanced away for one moment because one of the cooks, my best friend, was dancing around to the awful music the other cook was playing. Then I looked back to the cameras and I nearly fell out of my seat. There was a man standing in the drive-thru. He's literally just staring at the screen that informs you of your order. I laughed it off and set my burrito down. I put my headset back on. Since the lobby was closed, I humored the guy and decided to let him order. Hey there, welcome to Taco Bell. How may I take your order? I put on my customer voice. If you work in fast food or even retail, you know what I mean. This guy, instead of answering, flipped out and he kicked the screen. I jumped up and my eyes went wide. I spoke again, serious now. Please don't do that, sir, or I'll have to ask you to leave. And he just laughs. Chills run down my spine as he walks toward the drive through window that I was dumb enough to leave unlocked. I run over just as he reaches it and slides it open. I keep my distance as he gives me this nerve-wracking grin. 
He's tall, slender, and pale, and looks and smells like he's allergic to showering. His teeth are yellow, and I was pretty sure the dude was high on something, due to the distant look in his eyes. Aren't you a pretty thing? I just want to slip my hand down your pants. He practically growled as he tried climbing through the window. With his torso inside, he grabbed my shoulder firmly, and then he wrapped his arm around my neck before I could slip away. It didn't take long for the cooks to see what was going on, and they ran over to me, but they were both small women. One of them pulled out her cell phone and called 911, while the other grabbed a broom and began to beat him with it. Me, I was oddly calm. I was just trying to push the guy away, and then the freak tries to touch me in places. In these situations after training in martial arts, you would hope to fight rationally to remember all the training you had, but I didn't. I freaked out. I bit down on this guy's arm and hard, hard enough to draw blood. I can tell the guy is in pain now. Looking back, I think I was the crazy one here. The police arrived, but the guy had run off. Luckily for me, he left a blood trail. The police used some of it as DNA evidence in case he was already in the system. And then they took our reports. I gave the very best description I could, but from what I've heard, they never caught the guy. I quit working there the following day. After a week, I was put in therapy for the incident. And honestly, I had nightmares after that. It drove a wedge between my boyfriend at the time and I, and eventually we split up. This happened seven years ago. I graduated high school the following year, 17 by then, and I went to college and became a mortician. I got married three years ago, and oddly enough, it was to one of the people that had worked at Taco Bell with me. He wasn't there on the night all that happened, but had actually come in to cover for me the rest of that night. He and I have two kids now, and needless to say, we won't be letting them work at Taco Bell. Number two, Taco Bell Weirdness, submitted by Renee. My sister and I worked for Taco Bell. I was there a little longer than her, but together we wasted about nine and a half years there. But during that time, we saw quite a few things. For example, one night before my sister began to work, there was a drunk and bloody fight that broke out in the drive-thru and one time someone threw a bunch of burritos back across the counter. But there was one night that really freaked all three of us out. It was me, my sister, and my manager. We were closers, and it was a long, busy night. It was just shortly after we closed, we decided to sit down and eat because we have not had anything to eat for our 10-hour shift. So we're sitting there, and this guy comes up out of nowhere, pounding on the door, wanting to come in. Apparently, he was really hungry. My manager went to the door to talk to him to see what he wanted. He replied, I want to order food. Can I come in? My manager told him that I'm sorry, we're closed, but he still stuck around for a while. It was really odd and creepy because he stayed by the door even still and still kept asking to come in. We got back to closing up and he's still there walking around the front door. Occasionally, he'll go out to the parking lot just to come back. A few moments after I had walked back to the lobby to clean up, I checked to see if he was there, and he was gone, like completely gone. I looked all around the store and nothing. My manager decided to get the keys and open up the roof door. We got up there looking around the whole area, not wanting any surprises coming out at us when we left. Who knows what this guy really wanted? In the area where our Taco Bell is located, there is a mall and a few other restaurants, there's a bridge crossing over a nearby canyon. I'd seen him walk in the direction of the bridge at one point before he had wandered back to the doors. We checked the area over and over, but there was nothing. This guy didn't have enough time to get far enough away from us for us not to see him, or at least some movement. It was really creepy, and it freaked out my manager more than me and my sister. Where was the guy? Even as we were finishing up our work and getting ready to head out, we continued to look for the guy, but we didn't see him again that night, despite each and every one of us keeping a close eye out on this guy because we thought he might jump out at us once we left. He was literally nowhere to be seen, and I can't even begin to say how creepy it was walking out to my car. 
I thought he'd be hiding somewhere, waiting for me. But that's only one of the creepy things that happened there. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but this happened just after I started working there. It was probably close to 12 years ago now. There was a base jumper that came from Georgia. He was really excited to go jump off our bridge. He had just gotten off the bus. He walked from the bus stop to the Taco Bell. He decided he couldn't wait until morning. So he had come through Taco Bell before heading out to the bridge. I took his order and handed him his food. He jumped alone that day and in the dark. Something happened with his parachute and he landed wrong. He was stuck there all night and ended up dying of pneumonia. When his girlfriend called him in the morning and he didn't answer, she knew something was wrong and she called the police. And soon enough, they found his body. I was the last person to see him alive, the last person he talked to. When I found out about this, it was really upsetting. If I had known what was going to happen, what he was going to do, I would have tried to stop him. But can you imagine your last words being spoken to the person handing you food at Taco Bell? Number three, Taco Bell Ghost Story. Submitted by Emily B. This is a true story from the famous Taco Hell. The story took place in the South while I was 12. I'm 18 now, and ever since then, I've steered clear of Taco Bells. Let me start off with some background about myself. I was never a girly girl and had no friends. I was homeschooled. My mother and her mother had always had a strong sense for the paranormal, and being my mom's daughter, I've always wondered if I had the same sense. This is very important for my experience. I was 12 and with my stepfather, and we were coming back from visiting family. We decided to get a snack at Taco Bell. We went inside and the place was really busy, so I decided to go sit at an empty table while I waited. I glanced back at my father who was in line, then back at the table. I was startled because a boy, I think my age, was now sitting across from me. I never saw him sit down there, he was just there, but I didn't think much of it. At the time, I just thought that he did the same thing as me, just waiting on his family. Maybe he just wanted a break to get off his legs. About a minute later, I was bored, so I struck up a conversation. Hi, how are you today? He looked over at me and smiled. I'm fine, just waiting. I returned with a grin. We started talking casually. The whole time it felt kind of weird because people were looking at us frequently with strange looks. I ignored it though and continued to talk. About eight minutes later, my dad waited by the door for me to leave and I stood up saying goodbye to the boy. I looked back once more and he was gone. While I was getting into my dad's truck, I saw the boy waving from the Taco Bell window and I waved back at him. My father drove away and I was watching the building go by when I saw a memorial with the picture of the boy's face on it, dated three years back. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, so I quickly grabbed my phone and using my location in the search engine, I eventually found a story from three years back. In summary, it read, a young boy was left by his parents in a Taco Bell and while he was waiting, after deciding to go outside, he was hit by a speeding car. A picture was attached and it was the same boy, the same face from the memorial, the same face from the boy that stood across from me. I felt sick. My dad had to pull over as I threw up. We headed home in silence and the whole time I was in a daze, not saying a word. To this day, I still remember vividly what that boy's face looked like and ever since then I've thought, what a terrible place for a spirit to be trapped in. Number four, a late night at Taco Bell. Submitted by Ellie P. When I was 18, I moved out of my parents' house and never looked back. I admittedly had a strained relationship with my parents and I did not feel comfortable until I lived in a different state entirely. And soon enough, I lived 10 hours away from them. I wasn't familiar with Texas and being near Dallas, there was a lot to take in. 
But after spamming and adding a lot of people on Facebook in the surrounding area, I started to network and make friends with similar interests as myself. I met a girl who quickly became my best friend. As a matter of fact, we're still best friends. Being both 18 and slightly reckless, we were kind of wild at the time. Most of our hangouts consisted of smoking and drinking and jamming out to music. Now, the guy I was seeing at the time was kind of controlling, and unfortunately, I did not notice the red flags until way after the relationship had ended. But he hated my friends and did not like me going anywhere when he wasn't home. Sure, it could seem like a normal concern from a significant other, but I don't know how to explain just how deeply he seemed to hate my friends. My friend, we'll call her Catherine, worked at Taco Bell. She usually worked the night shift, so she wouldn't get off work until around two. Often I would sit and take advantage of the free Wi-Fi and drink refills, and I would wait for her shift to be over. The town she lived in was small, and it was pretty dead after 10 p.m., so there was hardly ever any customers at this hour, and if there was, they were always in the drive-thru. Now, because of this detail, they never bothered ending the dine-in times. Around 12.30, a man walked in. He's around six and a half feet tall, wearing a long green coat that hid the rest of his clothes. He had a wild gray beard that reached almost to his stomach, and he sat down at a table directly across from mine. I grew a bit anxious, but I continued to play on my phone. I messaged Catherine, and I watched her check her phone. I had said, Dude, this guy is creepy. Catherine replied, Oh my gosh, yeah, he is. She sends me a big-eyed emoji and I watch her shuffle to the counter. Excuse me, sir. You can't stay here unless you plan on ordering something. He says nothing and gets up and goes over to the counter. Catherine is only 4 foot 11, so he towers over her. He raises his arm and points at the stack of cups and she pulls one off for him. He then pulls a bill from his pocket and places the crumpled money on the counter. He grabs his cup and proceeds to sit down again in the same place as before never feeling the drink. It's now 1.30 in the morning and she's beginning to clean up the kitchen. I keep my eyes to the phone, but I can feel his eyes on mine like lasers. Fast forward and it's now 1.55. Catherine's standing against the counter, phone and purse in hand. Our friend Josh walks in as it's now his turn to take over the shift. I watch her whisper something in his ear and he begins laughing. His eyes rest on the man in front of me. I stand up and throw my drink away. Catherine walks over and we exit through the front door. Just as we're going out the door, I hear the sound of a chair scraping against the floor and I look back only to see the man is also leaving. In a low voice, I lean into Cat and I say, we need to get out of here now. We start half jogging around the back of the building to a road that leads in the direction of Catherine's house. Then my phone starts to go off repeatedly in my pocket Thinking we've lost him, we slow down and I pull out my phone. I have a bunch of messages on Facebook from someone I don't know. The profile name is James Jameson. No profile pic and clearly a fake name. But chills go down my spine as I read the messages. Don't run from me. Wheels are faster than you can run. I know where you and your friend live. Then there are several photos of my friend and I on different occasions, different days together and separate. Pictures of me walking my dog, checking my mail and getting coffee at the cafe. Pictures of Catherine and I at the mall browsing shelves. He then sent me a message. It had my full name, my address, my university and other personal details. Details a stranger shouldn't know. I shoved my phone in my pocket and at this point I'm shaking, I'm so scared. I'm cold and I'm sweating. I have no time to speak before headlights appear behind us I grab Catherine by the arm and I yell, run. Her house is a 45 minute walk. We're just a block away and the lights are behind us again. I glance back to see a white van. It's your cliche pedophile van. We run harder and faster. Before we reach her door, she trips on the step. I help her up and she starts scrambling on the ground. I I've lost my keys. We search frantically and find them just as the van stops in front of the house and the man gets out. She finally unlocks the door and we tumble inside. He tries to stick his foot in the door, but we close it just in time. We can hear this guy outside the door. His breath is rough, and he begins to laugh like a maniac. 
The sound chills me to the bone. Catherine pulls out her phone and calls 911. She explains the situation and remains on her phone while the police are being sent to us. We hear glass break from the other side of the house and Catherine's eyes meet mine with a sheer look of terror. I gesture to the shoe closet behind the house door and we quickly squeeze ourselves into it, shutting the door as fast as possible. Then we hear the loud thudding footsteps of someone searching for us in the house. I'm biting my hand, trying not to scream. We hear him in the living room and he speaks for the first time in a raspy voice. I love it when they play hard to get. I'm shaking uncontrollably now and I feel Catherine silently sobbing as we cling to each other. There's a loud crash and I assume he has thrown or smashed something and I feel a scream escape my mouth. The laughing and footsteps come closer to the closet, but at the same time, we hear the sirens. After what feels like forever, we finally hear a different voice, a police officer telling us it's safe to come out. Honestly, we're too scared to move. The closet door opens and we're surrounded by light. They did arrest the man, and later we found out what he had in his van. Rope, tape, knives, and roofies. So you can probably guess what could have happened to us if the cops hadn't shown up when they did. Number five, Nightmare at the Taco Bell. Submitted by Leia. I am from Sheffield in the UK and there are only two Taco Bells in my city. I was 16 when this happened. It was my 16th birthday and my friends took me out to Taco Bell as a little treat. We ordered our food and sat down across from this scruffy looking man. His hair was long and matted. He had holes in his clothes. At first I thought he was just a homeless guy who was eating his lunch because he had some change, so I thought nothing of it. While we were eating, he just stared at us, not moving his eyes at all. His eyes were just fixed on us. I tapped my friend Dana. Dana turned to look at me and I whispered, that dude over there has not stopped looking at us once. She turned to look at the man and the man quickly looked down. So Dana shrugged and said, he's probably on drugs. I agreed and we carried on eating. We finished our food and I needed to use the bathroom. So I walked into the female toilets and went inside a cubicle and locked the door. While in the cubicle, I heard the door open and at first I thought it could have been a female coming in but I was wrong. I heard heavy breathing coming from outside my cubicle. I just thought it was a woman with breathing difficulties. And then I heard a man. I know you're in there. Being the fearless person I was, I opened the door. Outside my cubicle was the same guy that had been staring at me and my friends. I noticed he was holding something behind his back, but I did not know what he was. Immediately, I ran out of the bathroom as fast as I could, barely able to run past him. I informed a member of staff about this situation and they rang the police. And apparently, the man had been holding a knife. I was clueless why no one stopped this guy from coming in the woman's restroom. Certainly someone had to have seen him. Number six, time paused in the Taco Bell bathroom. Submitted by JP3. I had been working out about 10 minutes before arriving at this Taco Bell. I was very nauseous and dizzy. My friend Tom was with me at the time as his parents weren't able to pick him up. Anyway, here's the story. We arrived at Taco Bell at around 6.30 p.m. and we went inside. I got really sick so I told Tom to pay for the food. He went up to order and I ran to the bathroom. I immediately threw up. Now, I had my watch on and it said 6.34. Now, this was before I opened the door after I was feeling better, but all of a sudden, I hear frantic knocking on the other side of the door from Tom and some of the employees. They said I was in there for four hours and I was incredibly quiet, too quiet. Our tacos were cold and our Baja Blast slushes were now just flat soda. I, I told Tom, I looked on my watch and it said I was only in there for three to four minutes. I talked about this as we were heading back to the car. I didn't realize it before we entered, but there was a strange feeling about the place that I could not describe in the parking lot. I was creeped out and very confused. I began to feel more sick than I did when I came in. I dropped Tom off at his place 
and I went straight home to sleep off what had happened. All I can say is that I never want to go back to that place again, simply due to the fact that I don't feel like losing any more time off of my life from some demonic bathroom. I don't remember passing out or fainting or waking up on the floor, anything like that. I went in, I threw up, and I walked out. How could so many hours have passed? Well, it's a good thing I prefer Wendy's anyway. Don't let these stories keep you from the stoner's paradise of Taco Bell. Sure, some creepy things have happened there, but as these videos always tell us, creepy things happen everywhere. Whether you're asleep in bed at home or you're enjoying some midnight burritos at the local Taco Bell, there is always something watching, something waiting in the dark, something with sharp fangs and a wicked smile. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget, check out crunchyroll.com darkness for 30 days of free anime. Thanks.